Hello and welcome to the CNS Supervisor Training. My name is Amy Smith and I'm the Senior Director of Certifications and Advocacy for the Board for Certification Nutrition Specialists or the BCNS. The BCNS is the Certifying Agency of the American Nutrition Association or the ANA. In this video, we'll be covering the important aspects of BCNS supervision. The information I'm providing is intended to ensure that supervisors and candidates are in compliance with the best practices for the CNS credential and for state licensure laws. The supervision process, along with comprehensive reporting and disclosure requirements, is essential for the CNS candidate and certifications. This rigorous oversight is not only crucial for earning the CNS certification, but also for obtaining state licensure when required. So again, thank you for taking time to view this training and for all that you do for the BCNS in our profession. Today, we'll cover the supervisor requirements, supervisor and candidate responsibilities, the SPE categories, states with special requirements, the PN data collection form, some questions to consider when, when we're viewing a candidate's case and the supervisor report. As a reminder, three sister organizations make up the American Nutrition Association or the ANA. The ANA is the umbrella organization which offers membership and educational opportunities. The BCNS is the certifying arm in which the CNS is earned and the Accreditation Council for Nutrition Professional Education, or ACNPE, is the accrediting arm of the ANA. This configuration is similar to the organizational structure of other professions. For example, registered dietitians have a similar triangle where the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is their umbrella membership organization, the Commission on Dietetic Registration, or CDR, is their certifying organization, and the Accreditation Council for Education in Nutrition and Dietetics, or ASCEND, is their accrediting organization. The BCNS welcomes practitioners to become supervisors for the Certified Nutrition Specialist, or CNS, candidates. CNSs are advanced degree nutrition professionals. As such, your participation as a CNS supervisor offers you and your practice many benefits. It provides you with an excellent opportunity to fully integrate nutrition into your practice through the services of a highly qualified nutrition professional resulting in enhanced outcomes for your patients. You will help advance the professional career and support the mission of nutrition as a foundational tool in the prevention and management of chronic disease. And helping a nutrition professional grow will broaden your own knowledge base and clinical nutrition skills. There are several eligibility requirements for BCNS supervisors, including experience and education. All supervisors must have at least three full-time years of clinical experience, in nutrition care after obtaining the required credential or degree. They are also required to have either a master's degree or PhD in the field of nutrition or be a licensed MD, DO, or ND with didactic training or education and experience in clinical nutrition. We do require that MDs, DOs, and NDs submit 75 hours of continued education credits when they are applying. DCs must also be a CNS or M have a master's degree in nutrition. To address the required competencies, the 1,000 required supervised practice hours may come from multiple venues and supervisors. Supervisors may supervise a candidate in multiple settings, and candidates may work with multiple supervisors. Each supervisor must meet the eligibility requirements and be approved by the BCNS prior to supervising candidates for eligible practice hours. Any hours that are accrued under a non-approved supervisor will not count for SPE. It is important to note that your state licensing requirements may be different than those of the BCNS. While we are proactively working to help CNSs get licensed at the end of this process and meet the requirements of most states, we strongly recommend that you and your candidate find out their state licensing requirements, including the supervisor requirements before you begin working together. Links to help find state laws are found on the ANA website. Supervisors must meet state requirements to practice medical nutrition therapy in their home state and the state in which the clients reside. Candidates need to be aware of this in deciding which clients and supervisors they will work with, especially if they are doing telehealth across state lines. Licensed or certified nutritionists or dietitians are only eligible as supervisors if they also hold a master's or doctoral degree in the field of nutrition. Approved supervisors may supervise multiple candidates on an ongoing basis. Supervisors may not be married, related to, or domestic partners with supervisees. For potential supervisors who are not CNSs, licensed nutritionists, or do not hold a master's degree in nutrition, the BCNS will evaluate both didactic training and experience in clinical nutrition as per the supervisor qualifications outlined. 
All supervisors must demonstrate training and experience in nutrition assessment, nutrition intervention, and medical nutrition therapy and evaluation. There are several supervisor responsibilities that you must be aware of. Supervisors must view this pre-recorded SBE training session. They must assume professional responsibility for work done by the candidate and implement a system that reflects that they have authorized, verified, and directed the candidate's work while under supervision. Every client case should be reviewed with the supervisor. It is important to note that the candidate can begin their SP once they are enrolled in their degree program. However, as, an, as a supervisor, it is your responsibility to ensure safe client care. You should carefully assess their progress in their studies before determining if they are ready to work with clients one-on-one. -on -one. Supervisors must assist each candidate in structuring an experience that meets the CNS supervised practice experience requirements and competencies, the candidate's evolving skill level and career goals. Candidates should, should articulate personal career goals in addition to meeting competencies. Goals will, can also evolve throughout the SPE. Supervisors need to provide adequate, active, and continuing oversight of their candidates' activities, including the review of their practice on a regular basis via regular scheduled conferences with the candidate. Supervisors must have access to all client records of the candidate and review them at regular intervals. Supervisors should keep notes on their candidate's work in progress and be available to their candidates when the candidate is working with a client as reasonably appropriate to the circumstance. When the supervisor plans to be on vacation or otherwise unavailable for an extended period, a backup BCNS approved supervisor should be designated. All supervisors must hold liability insurance. While it is not a requirement of the BCNS, some states require the supervisor to review the candidate's performance by observing them directly with a client, either in real time or by having access to a recording of the nutrition services. It is essential to be aware of this if it is required in your state. Finally, all supervisors must renew supervisor status every three years. There are also a set of candidate responsibilities. Each candidate is responsible for securing the setting and qualified supervisor for their experience and for working with the supervisor to tailor the experience in accordance with the CNS supervised practice experience requirements. Experience competencies must be met. To meet all competencies, it is recommended that a candidate work with multiple supervisors in multiple settings. For the best outcomes, the BCNS strongly recommends that each candidate review the current licensing statute and regulations in their state before beginning the SBE so that it may be designed to meet the individual state requirements for record keeping, supervisor qualifications, supervisor responsibilities, including access to all client, client records and degree of oversight, supervisor competencies and skills and practice settings. To ensure that the candidates are working with a BCNS approved supervisor, each candidate is responsible for verifying the completion and submission of the CNS supervisor approval application for each supervisor that they will work with. Candidates are encouraged to have their supervisors approved by the BCNS prior to beginning the practice experience with a specific supervisor. The approval of the candidate's supervisor does not mean the candidate's experience is approved. Each CNS candidate must document and attest to the completion of 1,000 hours by completing on an ongoing basis and submitting their CNS candidate report. We encourage complete and timely record keeping throughout the SP and ensure, to ensure records are complete both for the BCNS review and state licensing. To ensure the candidate understands the PN care process, the BCNS encourages candidates to either use the PN case data collection form or a SOAP note or a dime embedded within an EMR for each client and review them with their supervisor. Candidates and supervisors must meet regularly. Meetings may be held in person or remotely and should be held as frequently as deemed necessary by the supervisor based on the candidate's level of expertise. The level of supervisor contact will be higher in the beginning of the SBE and may be reduced as the candidate progresses through experience. State laws vary in their requirements, so be sure once again that you are familiar with state laws relevant to the candidate. Candidates are responsible for making any financial relationships with the supervisor, which may range from a paid internship to a mentorship program for which they may be a fee to candidates. The BCNS requirements do not address financial arrangements. Candidates are required to disclose to their clients that they are under supervision as part of the requirement to earn the CNS credential and are required to use a title and any promotional materials that indicate the individual status as a student, trainee, or supervisee and that they are not licensed. You can, however, use any degree or certifications you have earned as long as they do not violate title restrictions in the state in which you are practicing. Remember, this covers the state in which you provide from as well as any states in which the client resides. 
Candidates are required to have student or professional commercial general liability insurance while under supervision. Satisfactory completion of the CNS supervised practice experience is essential to being awarded the CNS credential. The program is structured to ensure each candidate obtains an in-depth knowledge and skills expected of an advanced level nutrition professional while maintaining the flexibility required to achieve individual career goals. As such, candidates are responsible for tailoring their own supervised practice experience based on all the program's requirements, as well as locating supervisors that meet the qualifications outlined. Although the supervised practice experience may be completed before or after passing the BCNS exam, it is important to note that historically, those who have completed the practice experience perform better on the exam than those who have not. The CNS credential will not be awarded until the completed experience has been approved by the BCNS. The SB competencies are detailed on the website and in the supervisor handbook found within the supervisor portal. They're also outlined in each of the SBE application documents. The CNS supervised practice experience consists of 1,000 hours of supervised practice in clinical personalized nutrition in the following categories. Category A, personalized nutrition assessment and interpretation. Category B, personalized nutrition interventions, education, counseling, and ongoing care. And category C, personalized nutrition monitoring and evaluation. Each of these three categories require a minimum of 200 hours. The remaining hours may be in any of the three categories, and the 1,000 hours also includes any time that's spent with the supervisor. Let's go through each category in detail. So category A is personalized nutrition assessment interpretation. Nutrition assessment is an ongoing dynamic process that incorporates a systematic approach to collect, record, and interpret quantitative and qualitative inputs, which include diet, lifestyle, behavior, symptoms, nutritional genomics, biochemical laboratory markers, and personal and family history. Examples of category A hours include a comprehensive health history, a linking symptoms and health status, evaluation of laboratory data, including identification of optimal value ranges, evaluation of functional testing, evaluation of hormonal and neurotransmitter imbalances based on lab assessment, nutritional focused physical exam, body composition analysis, anthropometric measurements, dietary assessment tools. Think of category A as your initial consultation with the client. This could also include a discovery call to assess if that client is going to be the right fit for the candidate. Category B is personalized nutrition intervention, education, counseling, and ongoing care. A nutrition intervention consists of actions designed to change nutrition-related or lifestyle-related behaviors to resolve health issues or optimize health. It may involve any of the following activities, research related to a treatment plan, development of medical nutrition therapy interventions, client education, counseling and management of individuals or groups, food preparation instruction, shopping, sustainability practices, and behavioral and motivational interviewing. Interventions may include changes to the diet, use of targeted nutraceuticals, addressing issues related to lifestyle factors such as movement, sleep, stress, and stress, addressing food-related behaviors such as timing of eating, eating environment, fasting, food selection, food storage, and food prep. Category C is follow-up monitoring and evaluation. Regular reevaluation of medical nutrition therapy treatment and prevention plan and goals in accordance with evaluation of improvements made based on symptoms, overall health status, and quantitative and qualitative data. data. This includes review of clinical research, standards of care, and other indirect contact. Ongoing monitoring and evaluation are crucial to a robust client care as they enhance personalized personalization of interventions throughout the duration of the care process. Regular assessment of subjective input and collection of objective data enables honing and refinement of the therapeutic intervention strategies to build self-efficacy and behavior changes in the individual, thereby optimizing quantitative and qualitative measures of an individual's health. There are two types of hours that fit into those three categories we just discussed, direct and indirect. Direct hours will occur as the candidate becomes more experienced and more of the hours will, will be spent directly with a client or groups of clients or in preparation for client work. Examples of direct hours include counseling individuals and groups, activities directly related to the counseling of active individual clients or groups of clients, such as completing chart notes and or treatment plans, evidence-based research activities directly related to developing treatment plans, communicating with clients or other members of the client's healthcare team between live sessions, 
participating in community education, including the development and delivery of education to specific populations, and any time with the supervisor, including supervisor-led grand rounds and one-on-one -on -one meetings. Indirect experience is a planned learning situation that is not directly related to client care. It does not require intervention by the candidate, and it meets pre-planned stated outcomes and provides for candidate evaluation. Examples of indirect experience include listening to videos of clients and practitioner interactions and discussing findings with the supervisor, shadowing an experienced clinician in active clinical care and discussing cases with the supervisor, participating in supervised simulation exercises or role-playing, and utilizing case studies to analyze clinical cases and prepare treatment plans or handouts that are reviewed by the supervisor. Please note there's a maximum of 250 hours in the indirect category and that indirect hours are not required. The following activities do not qualify for SPE. Research that is not related to a current client, writing books, articles, and blogs, teaching classes in an academic setting, developing condition-based training programs and treatment protocols that are not related to a current client, presenting educational lectures, videos, or webinars for a mass audience, or watching educational lectures videos or webinars. A candidate must exhibit proficiency in medical nutrition therapy and be able to completely formulate actionable MNT and interventions, education, counseling, and ongoing care for the prevention, modulation, and management of a broad range of chronic disorders, such as those listed on the slide. While candidates are not expected to have direct experience with clients in every category listed, they are expected to demonstrate to supervisors that they have mastered the skills and knowledge which are foundational to developing personal nutrition intervention for a broad range of chronic health conditions at a level appropriate for an entry-level advanced degree nutrition professional. Some state licensing boards require a broad range of experience in MNT, so this is important for the consideration of the, the candidate. Just to review, the following are the documents that are needed for SB supervision and are required to be submitted to the BCNS. The supervisor must submit the supervisor approval application initially for approval. Once approved, they need to submit the supervisor approval application addendum for each candidate at the onset of your work together. And then the supervisor report is submitted at the conclusion of your work with the candidate. These forms can be found either on the website or in the supervisor portal. The candidate is going to use the checklist that is within their portal to make sure they have checked everything off that is required for the CNS credential. They are also going to use the CNS Candidate SPE report to track all hours. There are two tutorials available with details about completing this report. I highly recommend that all supervisors review each tutorial before starting their work with candidates. These tutorials can be found within the supervisor portal and on the website. While state laws vary, there are two states in particular that have special requirements above and beyond the requirements of the BCNS. If you have a candidate in Florida or North Carolina, please have them reach out to the BCNS at the onset of their supervision for more details. The BCNS has state mentors for each of these states to provide guidance, but it is important to reach out at the beginning of the SPE rather than at the end. Here are some suggested questions to ask while reviewing cases with your candidate. Please remember that it is your responsibility to review every case with your candidate. Did the candidate consider and organize all aspects of the case? Does the candidate demonstrate that they understand and are able to implement, implement the PN care process? Does the candidate properly and comprehensively complete chart notes? Does the candidate demonstrate competency in implementing every aspect of the PN care process? Does the report provide evidence that the candidate delivered valuable care and improved patient outcomes? Some of you may have completed this supervisor report many times the work you've done with candidates, and some of you may be new to the process. We have found that many supervisors wait until their candidates have completed the hours with them to, to begin filling out the supervisor report. The BCNS recommends that you begin the process when you begin working with the, the candidate and use the report throughout the process. We also recommend that you keep separate notes on the candidate and their progress. It is nearly impossible to remember everything after several months have passed. It is typical for the candidate to grow throughout the SPE. So keep this in mind as you're filling out the paperwork. Here are some things to consider when assessing your candidate's skills and knowledge upon completion of their SPE. Has the candidate demonstrated that they have developed the skills and knowledge that, they are, that are foundational to developing personalized nutrition intervention plans for a range of chronic health conditions? Is the candidate able to completely perform a comprehensive personalized nutrition assessment? 
This may include incorporating qualitative and quantitative inputs outlined in category A, personalized nutrition assessment and interpretation. Has the candidate developed the knowledge and skills required to determine which inputs are appropriate for any given case? Is the candidate able to completely formulate actionable, personalized medical nutrition therapy plans and interventions, education and counseling for ongoing care of, and prevention of chronic disease? Is the candidate able to completely formulate actionable, personalized medical nutrition therapy plans and interventions, education, counseling, and ongoing care for the prevention, modulation, and management of a broad range of chronic disorders? These include, but are not limited to the MNT listed in the category B, personalized nutrition intervention, education, counseling, or management. Does the candidate understand, can evaluate, and can apply knowledge of the key concepts in the formulation of actionable interventions and monitoring plans? While the fields on the form will allow you to keep typing, you can always use additional pages for your answers and evaluation and send them to the BCNS as an attachment to the report. Please complete all fields thoroughly to avoid the report being returned to you for a more comprehensive evaluation. This concludes the BCNS supervisor training. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the email address provided. We deeply appreciate your dedication and willingness to serve as a BCNS supervisor. Your role is crucial in fostering the growth and integrity of the BCNS credential, ensuring that candidates are well prepared and qualified to meet the highest standards of professional practice. Thank you for your invaluable contribution.